Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy Nutter Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're very close to Davor's Abyss to kick off the summit meeting, but we, uh, we received word that there might be a traitor among us. Uh, so uh, I'm really wondering who's that going to, who that is going to be. But uh, before we head across this bridge into Davor's Abyss, I'm gonna purchase one more upgrade. Mainly the upgrade for the workshop, which allows us to build a Rivian Onager, which can damage an enemy by three twice and gains a charge every time we lose an ally. The damage of the pitfall trap is also increased by two three, so we damage all units on this row by three. And the damage is every unit that appears on that row by three as well. So definitely buying that. Because uh, we have a pitfall trap in our deck, actually. I kind of missed that before. And then I think I'm going to add one of those onagers to the deck. It's actually pretty cheap, so it's seven. It does take a bit of wood, but uh, might as well get at least one of them in there. There we go, swapped out one of the cavalry units for a Rivian onager. And with that done, without further ado, we'll head across the bridge into Davor's Abyss. And it seems like it's actually crowded with ghouls. Interesting. Meave's force neared Davor's abyss. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the blood-stained snow. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside, he said. Something sucked out the marrow. Meave's soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Meave drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? A mine of the strip variety, Gabor explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water will rush in, fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. We just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. So wait, if that was an option all along, why didn't you just do that then? Why do we need to do that? But uh, yeah, I kind of misunderstood. I thought the summit meeting would be here, but of course it makes sense that the summit meeting is at the, well, the flippin' summit. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle, in spite of their fear. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you barred here in Mahakam? Course, your grace! Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day, on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Gee up! And with that cry, the queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. Here we go. A monsters it is, which should be fine. Short in battle, the dwarves delved deep into Davor's abyss, and from it pulled diamonds of unsurpassed quality. These stones glistened at all the courts of the north, bejeweling crowns, capping scepters, studding chalices, and glamorizing ceremonial swords. Some stayed in Mahak Mahakam, though in more mundane incarnations as drill bits or crystal cutters, for example. Yet the days of Davor's diamond delving were long past. Now, only monsters crawled out of this dark abyss. Gain seven charges on your old catapult without it being destroyed and keep your catapult well maintained on all sides. Okay, so we have an extra card here. Here's the way down! We need to break through and destroy the dam. I don't know why the screen is flickering a bit, but uh, destroy the dam. 
I don't know if that's happening. Yeah, it's happening on the recording as well. Never mind. Old catapult. Yeah, I'm gonna have to deal with that flickering. Apparently, nothing I can do about that. Every turn on turn start, boost all allied units by one. Every turn on turn start, if there are units adjacent to this one, gain one charge, then damage a random enemy by five and all other units on its row by two. If this unit's charge count reaches seven, Meave wins the battle. Okay, so let's start off with a few units then. If I use the drummer right next to it, now the drummer has the armor. Time for one we have enough to deal with that. And then I might as well pull our first Arbalest out of here. You know what? No, first another drummer. If I can put two next to the old catapult, that should be fine. So this lizard can damage us, but that's not too bad. Let's put the Grey Rider over here. Yes. Every turn on turn start if there are using units adjacent to this one, so on both sides, okay? Then we use our first drummer. Left. And right. sadly, of course, Left. the other right. cavalry unit. And they are pretty strong, so I'm guessing we get a charge next time. Then we're still protected, so I'm gonna use the Mahakam Ale right over there. And then the turn. There we go, more Nekis, no problem at all. Next up, we can use the Lyrian. No, the Aretusa adapt to put it over oh, here. She's oh, immune, actually. So let's get the Regiment Drummer over there. Then, Meave Warhammer. Get ourselves at least... Yeah, I do apologize for the flickering. It's the game freaking out for some reason. Your Grace, monsters approach from all sides. That's not a problem at all. Reynard, not a problem. Oh, he swapped. Yeah, he moved the catapult over. That is interesting. So let's put Reynard on there. Right next to the catapult. Then use our first regiment drummer to pull out the medic, which will do nothing. Tell me you jest. So that's a problem. And then we go for the slizzard again. There we go. So the catapult is pretty fragile at the moment. But I can fix that pretty much with the commander's horn in a minute. There we go. Commander's horn. And keep everything fixed up. Oh, wow. Yeah, I couldn't do anything about that. The death wish just took out the and stop flickering. So that's our final move. Wasn't able to kill everything. But yeah, okay, so we need to get the... If I need to say one bad thing about Thronebreaker, it's really that it sometimes doesn't clearly state what the win and loss lose ratios are. Because it says that if we go to seven charges, we win. But it doesn't say anything else. It doesn't say how that we lose if we don't get it to there. It doesn't say that we can win by points value, because we can't. Uh, so yeah. So, got a bit of a better hand this time, so let's just use the Forager to get oh, rid of two of those light infantry units. After twist. we've, of course, used the Regiment Drummer to do not one time a lot of damage. So that's uh, eight, but twice. One this should be seven. There we go, taking out the Neckers and then using the Forager in the next turn. Because the Forager is going to help me out in a second if I the use the Rivian Onager. But for now, we still have... Yeah, so they always move, but the Grey Rider moves with him, which is great. So there we go. The Catapult stays alive. We're at Charge 3. Let's use the Rivian Onager over here. Moving him back. Then use the Forager the first time to actually get some damage out. Then we have four times three damage, which should be spent on 
uh, these guys taking out three knackers and that's it for now so this time i filled up the field so the the catapult is always completely filled up which should be fine i'm not going to be able to play any of my other units but at least this way it's protected so uh tossing away the lyrian lance knacked and maybe even just using the warhammer just because and the flickering is still going as you can see so uh, we'll just end this quickly we're still giving up our position here with the catapult continuing to end our turn just properly i'm hoping they don't manage to kill the artusa death on the left there but i don't see how they will so let's just keep throwing away those units ending our turn and this should just give us an easy win yeah this just all of them are knackers and there we go, seven charges. And there we go, the dam destroyed. And indeed, Bard sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrians' stinging arrows and blades. Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The Queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee, yet Meave's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davil's abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. There we go, and we get the blood card. Silence came at last. The Queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole, hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. And I can see in the background that the, the environment has changed as well. Between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty, Maynard said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder in Chief. The Queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. Irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. Yet be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. Okay. That's not good news. So Bruverhoog seems to be angry with us for some reason. First day of winter going to be mighty rough, so cold the pickaxes are freezing to our hands, had to cease work. Five days later the snow has started two meters a day, no plowing visibility, chimneys barely poking out of the snow drifts. Six days later, monsters attacking from all sides, hard to hold ground, huge losses, and five days later had to abandon the mine, retreating to Boros Rump will return come spring. And they never did, of course, because we know the fate of Boros Rump itself, which is uh, sad. Oh, this keeps going. Is there something over here? Why can't we go? What? Okay, seems to be just an environmental thing. So I'm wondering if Bruver Hog is actually angry because we did interfere in his business while he urged us not to. Seems to be a chest over there, but 
Ah, I can access it, access it from here. And another fancy border for in Gwent. Let's check out the blood card. Blood, look at five cards from your deck and play two, then discard the rest. Huh. So basically play two cards from your deck. Interesting, but I think it's not that interesting, uh, as interesting as, what was it, the Royal Decree. You draw and play two Blitz units from your deck. Uh, but I'm really, really fine on throwing Blitz units all over the place, because the drummers do that job admirably. So we can just move up the mountain. So then we have the, the dam we just destroyed. I don't know if they actually use that dam for something else. Petrid, I agree, the mine must be evacuated, carry as much as possible of what ye've excavated so far, and raise a red banner so our scouts can spot ye in the snow. All of Boro's rump looks forward to your safe return to more folks. And we got a key with that. Interesting. But I haven't seen a closed off chest near Boro's rump. And if, if Brover Hog, by the way, is... Oh, the level is not loading in. Yeah, okay. If Brover Hog is actually angry because we just destroyed the dam, then I feel like Gabor might not be such a nice person. Welcome to the clans of Clan Vidmar. You share a tale, we share the ale. Hoo-hoo-ha. Okay, back into a little bit of a blizzard. I think I can see the... Yeah, the red scarf with the chest is over there. So if I just... I can just open that up immediately, probably. Yep, there we go. This is not Oro's Rum, by the way. But we get the animated Barnabas Beckenbauer card for Gwent, which is nice. And then we get this. Only the banner moves. Blown by the wind. Downright poetic. Prime material for a ballad. Perhaps even a whole saga. Okay. Sarcastic comment from Gascon. Fair enough, the ruins of White Forge. What's this in the snow? Gazing towards the horizon, Neve noticed a dark shape outlined against the mantle of snow that lay on the ground. It proved a tower, toppled and broken in pieces. Around it lay the ruins of other buildings, blocks hewn out of basalt rock protruding from the permafrost. That'd be the Clan Vidmar ruins! Said Gabor, hollering over the wind. Rich ones had their clan seat here till earth tremors turned all into dust. Hundreds of dwarves lived here once, and now, not a living soul. Ah! Uh, help! Save me! On the contrary, there was someone midst the ruins, and said someone was clearly in trouble. Neve ordered her men to find the unfortunate soul. They returned moments later, leading a dwarf whose teeth chattered. They had found him in a ruined building where he'd sought shelter from ghouls. Judging by his appearance, the dwarf had spent the better part of a week there. Marco Vidmar, they call me, he said, patting down unkempt hair that seemed to reach in all directions. I came here seeking a family heirloom, lost in the tremors and the chaos they caused. I ken the chamber where it ought to be, but, well, beasts made the lair there. I cannot drive them off on my own. Bold warriors like you ought to cut them down in a jiffy. So, will you help? Of course we will. I too have lost my home, estate, said the queen. So I understand well what you feel. I shall help you recover your heirloom. Call it a win. Mirko Vidmar's face lit up. Though he'd spent a week besieged and eating stale biscuits, and though there was a hoarfrost in his beard, he quickly trotted to the front of the column and led the Lyrian soldiers to the underground chamber. As promised, beasts awaited there. And here we go again. Probably a shortened battle. There we go. The legacy of the Vidmars. The underground chamber was decorated with numerous reliefs portraying the heroic deeds of Zvonk, the Vidmar clan's progenitor. One depicted the dwarf strangling a shalemark with his bare hands. Another, rescuing miners from a collapsed cavern. And the third, wolfing down a succulent pork knuckle. It came as no surprise Mirko wished to regain the relics of his famous ancestor. So here we go. So there we go, Neckers again. From there they come. Drive them back. They come from the ruins. What is this? Whenever a unit is played, it may be seized by this card. When a seized unit takes damage, move it back to its original position. Forgotten treasure. Interesting. Um, let's start with the drummer. Again, yeah. Again, oh, again. okay. 
I'm just gonna play Meef anyway. And then get another drummer out. That's gonna be interesting. So, these usually, yeah, in this game, they damage the units on their own row. So, if I use a Rivian on a Jir, they don't have reach. So, I could also just use the Lirin Horn already, but that would be a waste. So, the Wagenberg. And it's also seized. This is annoying. How... That is ridiculous. How the hell am I supposed to do this? So if I use... I'm just going to use the Lillian Horn now. So I can get those back. For some reason, the, the drummer doesn't have his charge anymore. Which means that my whole strategy is a bit gone, but... And the turn, maybe? Yeah, let's end the turn. More Nekis and his deck is out completely, but he might have more Nekis Warriors, yeah. So they're drawn by the gold, so to speak. I could use Xavier, but Xavier, yeah, well... I mean, it's random, right? It may be seized, but every single card I've played so far has been seized. There we go. We get Xavier back. Now we can use his charge to trigger the, the Regiment Drummer once. There we go. Wasted time for one. And we get Rainit. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. Then we can use Meave again. Um, go with an um, maybe even another drummer. Yeah, just another drummer. Pull that drummer out. Put it here. Left, right. Put it here. Left, right. So we raise the. The number of units we pull out, and then the Regiment Drummer again to get a uh, Hushduk. And we can give charges to both these drummers, Life at me which are strong. There we go, and end the turn. More Nekis, but this is not going to be a problem, I think. Consume a unit in your graveyard and spawn a base copy of it. Never you mind. If I go over here... No, wait. If I play the Wagenberg now... I do 4 damage on that entire row, which destroys that one and that one. Okay. And then we could use the Lyrian Blacksmith... On this row. Necessity. So we play the Lyrian <laughs> Horn. Mum. And that gets him back immediately. And almost the entire board has been taken out now. So I think I might be able to end this prematurely. Have the power of three adjacent enemy units. Okay, fair enough. I feel like the drummer units are almost immune to the effects of... What do you want to Ah, mean? no. They're not. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna pull another one to see. Yeah, the Lyrian Landsknacht. Long live me! And the Arbalest. I'm uh, just gonna fire away at this guy. And also pulled over there. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's uh, use the Onager. Is not being pulled over there, so I can use that to get my Arbalest back. And then get the Naked Warrior up to four. And there we go. And we, and we lose the Sapper again. Of course we do. Final card is probably not going to be anything useful. So he passes and we should probably pass as well. There we go. A victory. Before any other show up. So I'm assuming that people were lured by the treasure. Our units were being lured as by that treasure. As soon as the fight was done, Mirko Vidmar ran towards a crate that stood on a pedestal, slipping on the now bloody floor. When the dwarf lifted the lid, 
precious stones spilled out. Your heirloom? This? Asked the Queen, rather puzzled. I thought a pipe that belonged to your grandfather more likely. A golden froth? Seems to me Brother Murko wasn't wholly candid with us. This here's no heirloom, no family souvenir. It's the treasure trove of Clan Vidmar. We thought it gone for good. Pressed for the truth, Mirko admitted no family sentiment had prompted this expedition. The dwarf had planned to leave Mahakam and start a new life among humans. Yet he did not wish to do so without sizable capital. I can't stand to stay here a moment longer. The days, all of them, they're identical. Rise with the first cockscrow, march in double file to the latrine, crap on command, twelve hours down the shaft and home to sleep. Mirko complained. Want a wifey? Put on an application? In triplicate? Care to snip your beard? Elders got to approve it. You want to add buttermilk, not cream to your mushroom soup? Clan council's got to debate it. How's a dwarf not to get balmy? He has a point. I understand the lad. No two ways about it. Gabor sighed. But I feel it's my duty to remind you that what Murko's going and doing here, well, there are laws. Treasure's due the Elder in Chief, not to Murko. That's one. Second, any dwarf that wants to leave Mahakam can't take nothing but his breeches, his Dixie, and his coat. So, brief like, consider well afore you make your decision, Your Grace. Thank you, Gabor. Let Mirko Vidmar take the treasure and go, keep the treasure, or return the treasure to the Elder in Chief. I'm hoping, I'm putting my faith in the Elder in Chief. I don't know why, because we've seen no trust whatsoever from the guy, but let's return the treasure to the Elder in Chief. I sympathize, Mirko, said Neve. But I'm a crowned head. I must decline. National interest requires I show the greatest possible care for my relations with Elder in Chief Hu. Yet in aiding you, I could sour those greatly. I shall return the treasure to him, I must. While you do what you will. Mirko Vidmar swore under his breath, then jostled his way through the Lyrian infantry and into the mountains, towards human lands. He's not gonna get any better over there, of course, but uh, that's none of our concern. We did get nothing from that treasure, by the way. Which is also a bit sad, but nothing we can do about that. And with that, I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And when we get back, we're getting... I'm going to check the map. We're getting pretty close, I suppose. Although... Oh, yeah. There's a bit more left. But I don't think that's going to be too much. So maybe an episode or two. So hope to see you guys in the next episode. When we're going further towards Mount Carbon. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And see you next time in the next episode of Thronebreaker. Witcher Tales. Goodbye.